world views and opinions, there is this there is this nervous sense that yeah. we're running out of time uh, to prepare the world for for what's coming, and what's coming is uh, contact. I'm telling you, that's what many people believe. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, a bunch of questions just uh, opens up here, but to tie it back a little bit to Malachi Martin. Um, uh, this, of course, I guess, uh, kind of jump-started the uh, the Planet X uh, movement, for for lack of a better term. Uh, do, I mean, do you have any idea of what he meant by by the, the this statement? Well, no, I don't think he was referring to Planet X. I've read I've read some of that, uh, uh, and, uh, and and uh, and I do think that. You know, if you look at the funding, you know, they always say follow the money. Yeah, yeah. And if you look at the, the amount of money that we're spending uh, to try to find uh, extraplanetary planets, planets that we think could inhabit yeah. uh, could inhabit life. And in fact, just this week, you know, there are, there are scientists over here in the U.S. that are scratching their head because some of our weather satellites, which are deemed to be very important, especially in light of the, the political catastrophe yeah. of uh, Katrina and some of the other, uh, uh, you know, what happened in New Orleans yeah. uh, that has put a great deal of pressure on the administration and on the uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, uh, to be better prepared. And so we funded, in budget, we funded these satellites that are supposed to stu study the weather to give us better uh, predicting, predicting capacity yeah. to know what's going to happen there. But, but, but just this week, all of that was slashed out of the NASA budget. But guess what was funded? Returning to the moon, putting man on the moon, and the search for extraterrestrial life. So mm -hmm. what I tell people mm -hmm. is follow the money. Yeah. I mean, is, is Nabiru, is Nabiru uh, coming around the bend? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, think, I personally think that uh, Malachi was looking... Uh, at something else, but but the bottom line is, you're, and you are right, of course. There was a great deal of wild speculation on a lot of different fronts yeah. about what Malachi meant, and I'm not here to even suggest that I know exactly what he was talking mm -hmm. about. All I, all I all I was saying and am saying is that uh, we're, we've got less than 12 months now left in his prediction, and isn't it an amazing coincidence that now suddenly we're being faced with? Uh, the release of, uh, of a significant amount of information from the scientific community, many of whom are working out of laboratories who get grants from the government. Why in the world are they studying embrane theories? Why are they studying dim uh, various dimensions and dimensionality? Yeah. Why, are they study why are they studying the kind of stuff that I write about, you know, <laughs> stargates and those yeah. who come through them? Uh, you yeah. would think this would be relegated to the sci-fi community, to the next Star Trek movie. Exactly. Uh, but... But we're talking about a significant amount of government grants, at least in the U.S., and I think probably also in other countries, yeah. uh, that are that are funding uh, research uh, into these fields. And, and and it's interesting to ask the question, why? Yeah. And why now? Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, extremely interesting to follow this and track this. And, and just as you say, the, the terminology that they use sometimes is also interesting. You know, they talk about the... Uh, I read a few articles about also these, you know, open opening the portals and uh, the dimensions and the, the they call it the holy grail and then a bunch of you know the, it's it, it always ties back somehow to to the the mythological themes often also I, I think and and it's and it's very interesting and I think that you have um, highlighted that excellently w with the, the interviews that I've heard you on previously so uh, this is very interesting and. If if we are to you know uh, to talk a little a little bit about who who this actually might be, I mean it's I know it's an uh, almost an impossible question to to answer, I guess. But uh, I mean, are 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 these the same guys? Are that uh, I mean, if you leave uh, to the side for now, if or not the uh, UFOs exist or so forth, let's assume that uh, you know that they are there for for the sake of this the discussion and. Then focus on who uh, who they are, and um, wh what's your take on this? I mean, are these the ancient gods, or are they uh, demons, or fallen angels? What's uh, what's your take on this? Well, my my take on it is that many of us, from different points of view, are looking at the same phenomenon. 
Uh, I had somebody one time ask me if I'd go on Coast to Coast. In fact, this was brought up when I was on Coast to Coast with George Norrie just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the question, w- would I take on Zachariah Sitchin in a debate hmm. about world about worldviews and interpreting the phenomenon? I said, no, I wouldn't, and for two reasons. One, because I'm not qualified. <laughs> I'm not smart enough to take on Zachariah Sitchin. I'd just sick my friend Mike, Mike Kaiser on yeah. him. <laughs> but I'm not smart enough to do it. And secondly, I don't know what the point of that would be. I mean, I... I think that he was raised differently than I was raised, but both of us are looking at the same empirical and historical evidence. Yeah. We're both studying the same phenomenon, and neither one of us could, at least not right now today, with any uh, with any real sense of conclusion uh, determined for argument's sake, who was right. Yeah. And so I, I just I, I much more prefer uh, my own style, Henrik, is to have an appreciation for other people who are honest investigators of the phenomenon and who are trying to determine for themselves. Yeah. Uh, what this means, and I'd, I'd, I'd much rather work together with them, and, and while at, while at the same time I don't compromise what I believe personally, uh, but uh, but I want an honest and open investigation of the phenomenon. Now, yeah. to answer your question, I mean I, I mentioned a moment ago that there are people in the Pentagon now. By the way, this has not only been substantiated by me. Some of my friends, Stan Deo, told me that he uh, that he's heard from uh, a contact that he has uh, a, a fairly high level resource uh, yeah. that used the same language. In fact, it sounded like a quote, so I think him and I uh, going up the top of the tree somewhere are hitting the same source, uh, and that is that they're looking for a return of the uh, Sumerian gods. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Others would say we're talking about a return of the Nephilim. People, yeah. Some people say we're talking about a return of the uh, giants. So how would all of this now uh, tie into this other subject that we were going to talk about today, and that is the Nephilim? Yeah. Um, in, in several ways, and I know we're going to run out of time in a few minutes, so let me try to just say this quickly. Um, I believe that a kind of transgenic science was used in ancient times, and the story is redundant. It can be proved over and over again that it exists both in mythology and what, it, at least in the time of the ancients, wasn't considered mythology. It was considered their history. Yeah. Uh, it's primarily based on the history of these stories from these different civilizations, that uh, speak to us of a time when the gods came down and they mingled their species with the human race. And uh, for some reason, it seemed to require uh, the need to blend various species in order to create uh, a pathway, a portal, uh, through which they could extend themselves into the material world. That's even even talked about in the Bible. And there again, when you look at uh, 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 what even modern researchers have found, secular researchers, not people not with particular uh, religious ideas, uh, this connection between what the ancient watchers were doing and what modern abduction phenomenon indicates, yeah. uh, there is this there is this element, this need for vital energy, uh, molecular energy that is associated with three-dimensional life forms that somehow seems to be required as a kind of construct material for achieving uh, incarnation by these other dimensional beings. And, and here's a thought for you, Henrik. If the Creator alone uh, possesses the power to speak in the Bible, in the Hebrew, that's hayah, let there be. Yeah. If the Creator alone has the ability to call uh, raw atomic or nuclear energy into particular kinds of molecular form, is it, would it be true, this seems to be the testimony of these ancient texts, that after that fact uh, created li- living energy, might be able to be manipulated by the lesser gods, yeah. uh, whether you're talking about those angels, Allah, Mike Heiser, uh, who helped God in creation but fell after the fact, yeah. uh, or whether you're talking Sumerian theology, it, it seems to be that these lesser gods have some power, let's call it science, uh, yeah. advanced science, to be able to use that created matter to construct for themselves three-dimensional expressions. And, yeah. and researchers, uh, John Keel, uh, uh, other for, uh, guys, have said that that's the reason why you find this um, uh, where uh, animals and humans have been killed and mutilated uh, or even stolen, uh, disappeared in hmm. these UFO flap areas because that molecular energy, for whatever reason, is needed. Hmm. Now, in the case of the Watchers of the Book of Enoch in the Old Testament, 
the use of vital energy as a construct material for forming this dimensional pathway yeah. is interesting because it appears to have included the need for both animals and humans. And that's it, the interest I have in that goes back to transgenic science. Yeah. Um, Enoch, in his rudimentary language, he says they sinned against the animals as well as the humans. And, and for me, you, that's, a, that's, that's an interesting point. You have to ask yourself if the only reason why the Watchers involved themselves with women was because of their beauty, uh, then what was this blending with animal and human DNA all about? Yeah. Now, I, I think, it, you know, from purely a spiritual or maybe metaphysical point of view, uh, that creation of humans uh, by God, first of all, the, the Hebrew Old Testament, God created man, and he says it is ta'ud. It is very good. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. But the sense yeah. there is, these were vessels now that had been created that were appropriate uh, temples uh, into which God's Holy Spirit yes. could dwell. Yeah. Now, when the watchers came down, maybe it was necessary to alter at the genetic level these humans. So that now, instead of being potential vessels of the Holy Spirit, they become vessels for these rebel spirits. They become something different. They become something God had not created, into which they could incarnate themselves. Now, that may sound wild, but the implication behind that is in Genesis, where, uh, in, and I love reading the interlinear Hebrew Bible, yeah. in Genesis 6-2, where it says, The B'nai Elohim saw the daughters of Adam, that they were fit extensions. Hmm. Now the term there, fit extensions, is understood by many scholars as meaning something what, what I might refer to as a portal, yeah. a gateway. Uh, the use of molecular energy being manipulated at the genetic or the atomic or the subatomic level, somehow being changed, altered, in order to format a navigational dimensional pathway. Yeah. Now what I say to people is that what if by corrupting this species barrier that was commanded by God, you know, the Old Testament, so, in which each creature is supposed to recreate, quote, after its own kind. Yeah. What, what if by breaking that species barrier, these watchers had successfully mingled human, animal, plant DNA, yeah. and had, uh, according to, uh, according to uh, the ancient text, Book of Enoch, and had combined the hereditary traits of these several species into a new mutation, hmm. a Nephilim, that might suddenly possess uh, the combined intelligence, the instincts, the seeing and hearing and smelling and reacting to the environment of different life forms in ways that was unfamiliar to ancient men. Now, that's not just mythology. M modern biologists today hmm. uh, tell us uh, that they classify the functions of genes inside of their nat native species, but they're unaware, in many cases, how a gene's coding might begin reacting when taken from one species to another. Yeah. And we're already finding in genetically modified crops that it means unpredictable changes to yeah. the species, yeah. things that cannot be forecast, things that happen that we, that we do not foresee through the merging of different species into one wholly new species. Yeah. Now, one of the sciences, of course, that I talk about in my book, The Aramon Gate, uh, and I talk about it quite a bit, is the science of transgenics. Transgenics is the, the science of altering the genetic structure. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, in some cases, even the nature of a species by introducing DNA of a different species into its genome. And, and this is not theoretical science. We're already tinkering in many, many ways uh, in this way. We're already yeah. doing... Uh, transgenic science to human embryos, having their molecular biology uh, altered through inserting animal. And by the way, if you can accept the staggering possibility, alien DNA into the mm. genome. Mm. 